What is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Joe. Whoa. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. I hope you guys are having a great day. And welcome to our official movement guide. Now, before I get into the movement guide, I do want to thank Honey for sponsoring today's video. So as all of us know, a lot of us shop online instead of going in stores. And this is where Honey comes into play. It is a free browser extension that automatically scours the entire internet and finds you coupons at checkout for a ton of online shopping. So here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on one of its over 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait one moment to see what Honey can find and it usually find ones that works and you'll watch your prices drop. So again, guys, get Honey for free in the link down below. I would really appreciate that. It supports me, it supports them. And thank you so much to Honey for sponsoring today's movement guide. And now guys, let's get straight into the video. I do wanna break down a little bit for you. This is gonna be a two part series. This is gonna be part one of the video, which is actually gonna be two parts inside the video, the basics of movement and then the advanced movement, kind of the more basic stuff and me explaining my clips. And then next week is gonna be part two of our movement guide the super advanced stuff and that is going to be for after you guys perfect this week all of the basics and some of the advanced stuff next week then you're going to go on demon mode so quickly guys i do just want to say if you guys are new here and would like to subscribe no peer pressure at all but i would really really appreciate it it supports the channel a lot and i would appreciate it more than you guys ever know as we are approaching 200 000 subs on youtube again guys i cannot stress it enough thank you guys so much for clicking on this video if you guys have any suggestions suggestions down below for any future videos i'd love to take suggestions respond to your guys comments but without further ado let's get straight into the movement guide peace so in our movement guide video today i'm going to be breaking it up into three separate parts the first part is going to be the basics of movement in warzone it's going to be the fundamental keys that you should be mastering before you are going on to part two and part three for our advanced movement and when you're putting that stuff into play. So for part one, I'm going to be explaining everything from automatic tactical sprint, normal sprint, sliding, jumping, breaking cameras, and really the timings of all these movements. This can benefit you if you're a beginner player, really trying to learn the keys of movement instead of just being up, posted up in a corner hiding. Or this could also help you if you're a returning player to Warzone and feel like your timings are a little bit off. I'm gonna hopeful, hopefully fix these timing problems for a lot of people because I'm gonna be using Gamepad Viewer to show you the exact buttons and the exact timing that I'm pressing on all of these movements. Alrighty guys, let's get straight into part one, the basics. One little quick side note is I do want to apologize. I'm not the best talker in the world, as I say, but I'm going to try my best to explain everything that I know about movement for you guys. If you guys have any questions, obviously, please ask down below and I will try to answer as many questions as I can. And also because there's five tournaments or five separate days of tournaments in this seven day span, excuse me if I'm in different clothes for some parts of the video. I'm trying to record these before the tournaments and after the tournaments of its daylight or nighttime. That is probably why. So bear with me. So to start off with part one here, there's going to be two crucial settings that you're going to need to switch. Now, either if you're on controller, which I am, of course, as you see right there, or on mouse and key, this is going to benefit you tremendously. As you go into settings under movement, change your slide behavior to tap instead of hold. So switch this from hold to tap, and then switch your automatic sprint to automatic tactical sprint. The reason why you're, sw you're switching your side behavior to tap, it's gonna make your slide cancel smoother and quicker and more efficient and not like an awkward, I see some people like doing like a slide to a jump and all that, and hopefully this is gonna fix a lot of the timing problems. Also, when we're switching your automatic sprint automatic tactical sprint and what this does is one it saves your left analog stick a lot because but you aren't pressing it in and up to tactical sprint over and over and over and then also this will help you as you push your left analog stick up it goes straight into tactical sprint now to quickly describe the two different types of sprinting in warzone 
and also the point of slide canceling is this there's two different sprints there's tactical sprint and regular sprint the fastest way you can move on the map is with tactical sprint and that is going to be with your gun up in the air but you can't run this fast forever so as you're sprinting 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 this tactical sprint will eventually run out and go into a regular sprint which is much slower and but your character isn't as prepared for gunfights that is where slide canceling comes in there's a lot of misconceptions that it looks cool or just trying to be flashy it goes way past that and it resets your tactical sprint which means you're going to be moving faster on the map and faster across your enemy screens so now to get into slide canceling and the point of slide canceling and how to slide cancel the point of slide canceling again like i said is to reset your tactical sprint which means you're going to be a lot faster on the map and across your opponent's screen and how to slide cancel is tapping your slide which is circle or b or c twice and then pressing your jump button once so you're going to be going into a tactical sprint tapping slide twice and jump i see a lot of people have timing problems where they're like going into a sprint to a slide to a jump and this isn't helping them slowing them down and then they're a very easy target if they go into a slide and then just jump awkwardly they're just standing still super easy target again it's going to be a sprint tap to slide jump tap to slide jump tap to slide jump now again this is for to reset your tactical sprint instead of going into tactical sprint like so and just running across a opponent's screen or crossing a field then you go into regular sprint like you see right now which is a lot slower and then unprepared for gunfights compared to tactical sprinting and slide canceling you're a lot more prepared for gunfights a lot faster and your tactical sprint is always there so you're faster for fights and per the slide cancel then you are much more shifty on your opponent's screen so now for another basic movement type that a lot of people do not take advantage of and that is going to be crouching now it's unreal like well duh crouching is easy but a lot of people do not take this to their advantage in warzone because instead of crouching and snaking a head glitch they're just crouching behind cover to hide and plate up so with this technique here this is going to be snaking a head glitch to avoid cover and avoid fights and make you a lot harder to hit so snaking simple is going behind a head glitch as you're fighting somebody and crouching up and down like so so as you're crouching up and down like this to plate up because if you're fighting a team and they take shots at you instead of which i see a lot of people do most people hide and plate up or just crouch and look at like a wall instead what you should be doing making a head coach like this which for your opponents is a lot harder to hit because they're seeing your shoulders bob up and down from here to here which is very hard to track and also for you can see what they're doing as you're plating up and getting more sights on what they plan on doing so most people take shots back and just prone out to plate up or hide behind the cover what you should be doing snaking this head glitch and plating up then you can see what your opponents are doing but if you're snaking this head glitch and see one player is going right one player is going left you then have sights on the map and see okay because of the timing in the game he'll be here quicker than this guy grabbing all the way right so instead of hiding i should chow this guy first chow him and then get this knock and see okay i had this first person coming here and then also saw his teammate wrapping left and can fight him now instead of just proning out here waiting up and then hopping back up you still think they could be in this area but you really don't have a clue so snaking is very very important to gain what sites of the people that you're fighting and what they plan on doing because most teams as they take some shots they're going to start playing more aggressive on you so now that i covered tactical sprint regular sprint glide canceling and snaking 
I'm going to be teaching you guys another basic tip that a lot of people do not think about, and that is going to be jumping. And a lot of people do jump for some fights and stuff, but I'm going to be teaching you guys an advantage to go on the offense more frequently than playing defense as you're fighting a team. So let's say I am here, right here on these tires, fighting a guy here. So let's say I slide here into the fight, take some shots, and I'm very hurt. Instead of, again, going behind these tires to plate up, a lot of people then put themselves in a corner and trap themselves where then their opponent can push straight at them and they have more of the advantage in the fight than you do. But putting yourself on the offensive side and getting info is so crucial. So instead of going behind these tires, sliding into a fight and fighting, after they take shots back at you, going behind these tires or a object and jumping as you're plating is going to be very, very crucial to get more information on the target or the team that you're fighting. Because let's say that you slide into this fight, this person then breaks your armor and starts pushing straight to you. Most people then hide right here and plate up and have no idea that they're pushing. Instead, jumping here and seeing, okay, they're channeling pretty fast. You can go right, you can go left, you can just slide right and slide left and then chow here. Using jumping to your advantage to then play more aggressive as you're healing and get more information on your opponents is going to be very, very important as you're fighting. Putting yourself on the offensive instead of the defensive as you're like hiding to heal is going to be very, very crucial and will win you a lot more gunfights than just hiding and healing. Alrighty, guys, now that we're in plunder, let's get into another technique and a basic movement tip that is called shouldering. So when I talk about shouldering into a gunfight, the main goal of these simple tips like a snaking or a jumping is to get information on the team that you're fighting. What I see a lot of people do is they'll go into a fight take some shots on somebody and then run away without any information of what else is happening. So the point of shouldering is going from your right to left or your left to right to gain information as you're healing or plating, which I can grab this plate actually, which is perfect. Or oh, satchel, we're going to. Oh, um, for a fight. So let's say I am siding through here, start to fight, and then have to heal. What most people do is just back off and start to heal. But as they're healing, they have no idea what this player is doing or this player on the stairs or just in this area. What you should be doing is throwing shoulders on that door, that window, that box, so then you can see what is going on and what your opponent is doing to gain more information, which is it's very, very important is putting you on the offensive end, even if you're playing defense. So again, it's a right to left or a left to right. So let's say that you're fighting, get hurt as you're plating up, doing this and seeing, okay, he's pushing me. He slid up the stairs. He ran outside. So let's say he then runs to his right. What you can do is heal up and slide inside and then chow. Slide cancel into this and fight. Or see, okay, he's then outside and he's then coming around. So then you can come back out, fight, come back out and fight. But all of these things would not happen if that you didn't have information on your opponent throwing these shoulders. And it's basically throwing your left stick in like a half like circle maybe example actually how many coasts are here wait look wait what the all right so throwing shoulders seeing okay and as you can see here he can't even hit me this is perfect oh my gosh so instead of just standing here i'm then throwing shoulders i can see he's prone out not sure what he's doing but I then have information on my opponent. That's crazy because it's just so random. But, and then you can just slide out and fight. His name is the biggest rat. 
Perfect. Now that we covered the basics of movement in part one, we are now going to be moving on to part two, the advanced stuff. In part one, we covered sliding, jumping, tactical sprint, and really the basic fundamentals. Now we get into the more flashy stuff and the stuff that really matters in the advanced movement. So for the advanced movement, I'm going to be talking about throwing shoulders, slide challenging, B hopping, the fade away, all the stuff that you guys have seen in my clips. I'm going to explain to you guys how to do it and also show you guys when it's put into action and to the test against opponents, how this really puts you at, at an advantage and really how movement can make you finesse an entire team, make them look completely silly and have movement work for you. Alrighty guys, let's get straight into part two, our, our advanced movement. And in part two, I'm going to be going over how to maintain that slide cancel and make sure it is very fluid and how to make sure that you are breaking the cameras on your opponent's screen. I'm going to be explaining some of that further. I'm going to be showing you guys how to B hop. And then I'm going to be showing also how to combine those certain mechanics with the slide cancel, the B hop, the tax sprint into certain movements where I'm going to be going over my clips and explaining through my clips play by play situation. So to start it off, as I touched on in part one, the basics, I'm going to be going over the slide cancel one more time. But I'm going to be showing you guys how to maintain your auto tax sprint at all times. Like I said, with tax sprint, tax sprint is the fastest you are moving in Warzone across the map. So slide canceling with make sure it's fluid then reset to your tax sprint. But I see a lot of people doing a choppy or broken slide cancel, which is actually slowing them down. So a lot of people have a slide to a jump then they're stuck in place and an easy target or like a very short side cancel like this and they're very choppy and it's not fluid so the importance of making sure that right as you slide cancel is about the same time as your regular sprint is about to kick in making sure that you're slide canceling at almost that exact moment that then resets so your tactical sprint is back and that is the true point of slide canceling. Now, this goes by case by case scenario, of course, depending on the corners, the doors and stuff. So again, making sure to use your slide cancels to reset, to break the camera, but also to go into certain scenarios and certain fights properly is very important. Say that's sliding to a head glitch or sliding around a corner or through a door. Using that by a case by case scenario, which obviously takes practice, with the movement is key so a side tip that i also just thought of that could also go into aiming is going to be the centering of your character's screen now this is going to be very very important for movement also and will win you a lot more gunfights is making sure that your character always has very good centering now centering is where your character is aiming on your screen a lot of clips that i see that ask me what they are doing wrong is the first thing that i notice is they have very bad centering so they can have very smooth b hops and smooth slide cancels if they don't have good centering it doesn't really matter and as i explained a lot of players have their character screen either looking down like this so they're going into a slide cancel already looking down at the ground or they're too high in the air and they aren't ready for gunfights so most times the goal is to have your screen centering where the center chest of your opponent is going to be center chest and then neck and the head having your character screen and centering in this area at all times is very important because i can slide cancel fine around this corner but as i'm slide canceling around the corner i then have to readjust to the gunfight up which is more time which can lose you a gunfight. Or if you're side canceling too high, then readjusting back down. And having proper centering combined with a nasty slide cancel, B hop, shoulder, things like that can win you so many gunfights that a lot of people just don't think about because their centering is very far off. So sliding into fights and having proper centering is gonna be very, very key. So then, you're always ready for a fight and always shooting in this head to chest area. So sliding here and here and always having good centering is a very, very important tip. So now I'm gonna be going over the B hop. 
The B hop is one of the most effective movements in Warzone, and I know a lot of people have a timing issue on the B hop, which hopefully the gamepad down below will fix that because I am pressing all these buttons in real time. And basically, if you can just copy the exact timing that I'm pressing, this will help you fix a lot of your timing issues. So the B hop is going to be, as you're going into a fight, you're gonna be jumping, pre-aiming, pushing your stick in the direction you're trying to go and timing your hop twice. Now, a few times you can time it perfectly for a triple B hop. There's a clip that I can then go over at the end of this part two section where I show you guys the triple B hop and how effective it is. So as you're B hopping for your opponent, this is going to be very, very hard to track for them compared to a typical pre-aim around a corner. So tracking a player that's coming from here to here to here is going to be very, very hard compared to tracking a player that just walks around the corner. So going from a B hop here is way harder to track than somebody that's doing this. So again, it's a sprint. You're going to be jumping in the air, re-aiming as you're in the air, pushing your stick in the direction that your B hop is trying to go and jumping twice as your feet hit the ground. So it's gonna be a sprint, jump, aim, B hop. Sprint, jump, aim, B hop. Again, jump, pre-aim, time. Like so. Now, a lot of people then get dead B hops, which makes them an easy target if their timing is off. So what they do is this, and then they're stuck with no tax sprint, fighting a person most likely pre-aiming them in the dead of their screen, not moving. So a ton of people have bad timing like so, and they're stuck. Instead, as you're fighting, that is way harder to track than this. So now onto combining some of these techniques that I've been talking about. A very, very important technique, as I said in part one, is shouldering to get information. So on your opponent's screen, instead of you going into a fight like this, that's a very 50-50 gunfight. What you can do is combine the B-hop and the slide cancel to make it the most effective. So as you're slide canceling into a corner, this is then your shoulder. So say that you're fighting somebody at this crate right here. You are then sliding into this to then get sight on what your opponent is doing and then tack sprinting back to your left and then tack sprinting back to your right to then b hop across their screen from so instead of taking a fight which you don't really see them yet until here what you can do is glide cancel into the crate to throw the shoulder this opposing player then sees you slide cancel throw a shoulder so then you know they are at that exact point and that exact crate as you're throwing the shoulder. What they don't know is you can then tack sprint back to the left, tack sprint back to the right, and hit a B hop on them, and your feet won't even touch the ground, and they're gonna die instantly. And you are then combining your movement skills with the slide cancel and the B hop to finesse your opponent. And what they see is gonna be very, very hard to track compared to the typical walk around the corner in pre aim. So, again, Say you slide into this fight, go a quick shoulder and C, B hop. So again, go here, go a quick shoulder, back sprint, B hop. Into it, go a quick shoulder, C, okay, he's still there, B hop. Or say, slide into it and C, okay, he slid to the right. What you can do is then slide cancel into this head glitch and gain that information that you got from throwing that shoulder and that slide cancel on your opponent. So now I'm gonna be talking about the fadeaway B hop, which comes in but so many times, time and time again, it's gonna break your opponent's camera and really help you in a ton of fights if used properly. So let's say I am right here. Here's my target. Let's say I am now fighting this target and they shot back at me. Now, I am throwing the shoulder to see, okay, I'm very hurt. 
and the, there's nowhere else to go except this corner now obviously this is a private match soon it's a ton of plays from actual war zone that i can show you but let's say that here is this target that i'm fighting they take shots back at me and i'm throwing the shoulder to see okay they're either pushing me or they're still there what most people do is as they're hurt they sit in this corner as an easy target so now this person can come around the corner and you're an easy kill instead the fadeaway b hop can come into play because see them here combining the shoulder on the corner seeing them pushing you what you can do is then use your tax rent and have a fadeaway b hop which is the same thing as the b hop you're just going backwards back into cover what you can do is not cancel into it they take shots back at you and you're really hurt your opponent will never expect you as they're pushing to have a b hop which can be very hard to track back to cover or just back in general because what most players do is hide in the corner but they're expecting that you're going to be here so they're going to be running right at straight to here to kill you but you can catch them off guard here as you're fighting going the shoulder backwards b hop to cover that is very very tough to track going from this fight to then bounce to this fight again go here hit the shoulder see they're pushing you okay i'm coming back to here Alrighty, so now that i have covered the basics of the slide cancel the b hop and all that i'm going to be now explaining to you guys how to use certain objects to your advantage in warzone and if that you see me play you guys see me do this all the time and that is going to be slide canceling and changing directions against your opponent so what most people do is as they're planning on fighting someone they just walk out into the pre-aim or do a hop which is really easy to fight so if they're here on this little great thing here what you can do is make them track you in different directions one waste a lot of their ammo and two, it gives you a lot of information on what they're doing. Side right, side left, side right, side left. Here, and see, okay, they're just standing here. Oh, they're pushing me. And what they see is, you are breaking their camera. So before they can even see you, you're here. And you're here. On their screen. But you can then take this fight here. Or here. And see, okay, they're pushing me. They're not slide here and here and throw off your opponent to then gain knowledge on what they're doing or see okay he is sliding to my right here what you can do is this go right down instead of the typical hopping out to fight someone but you can slide here and gain a change of direction on your opponent's screen breaking their camera order to track and also gain the knowledge for you and see what they are doing and will win you a lot more gunfights because on your opponent's screen you can see them before they can even see you and combining with the b hops and the slide cancels and make you a movement master and we'll have you wiping teams and players before they can even see you so now i'm going to be getting into breaking down my clips for you guys and in this clip here i'm going to be showing you guys the importance of the b hop and in this clip specifically this is going to be the timing on a backwards b hop and how it's going to be very very hard for your opponent to track you i was fighting a team of three uh, i think i'm talking about z laner sim and husk and as i was going back to a hallway i did a triple bunny hop backwards now for this fight for the opponent i was fighting like i said it's going to be very very hard to track this so the first down and here i'm hearing the player on my left and then also instead of taking a just turn and fight i am then breaking the camera and the direction where he could think i am then running to his right instead i am going to my left breaking his camera and then going back to a bunny hop to the right slide cancel and then a b hop here this guy 
couldn't even see him to be completely honest. As you can see, this player right here, what a lot of people do would then be to just stop and start fighting or try to drop, drop shot or just shoot. And again, they're going to be a very easy target to hit because what your opponent is doing is already shooting at you in that exact spot. Like I said, a lot of people don't have the best aim in Warzone. So if you can make somebody track you while you're moving and shooting back, while they're flinching and being shot at, it is going to make them panic. It's going to be hard to track. And as you can see here, with a triple bunny hop backwards, this guy didn't stand a chance. So again, here's the importance. Bunny hop. Triple bunny hop backwards. And that again is going to be very, very hard to track as you're bouncing away from them, shooting back. That's going to be a lot harder to fight than somebody that just panics and freezes up and tries to fight someone that's already shooting at them at that exact moment. So in this clip here, I'm going to be showing you guys the first part is going to be the slide cancel and breaking the camera. And then also using the cover and the head glitch to your advantage and snaking a head glitch while you're fighting a team. I'm playing it through first and then I will explain it better after. So in this fight here, this guy on the wall is plating up like i say all the time it's a perfect example he is behind the wall with no information on what i'm doing he's not throwing a shoulder he's just nervous behind the wall plating which is what most players do instead of him he could be there throwing the shoulder to then see i'm coming at him but he has no information on what i'm doing so i come across the wall slide cancel break his camera doesn't even stand a chance next is i can see this car coming towards me i'm side canceling into cover behind the car and then i'm going to be using snaking crouching up and down to use a head glitch to my advantage and fight three players car, car, car. So as you can see decently sweaty team hops out of the car hit the first guy and as i'm fighting the second guy i'm crouching down going prone where the, i saw the other player on my right cannot shoot me if I'm standing straight up, he can shoot over top of the car and kill me. But if I'm snaking this car head glitch, it's a lot harder for him to track and also for the second player because I'm going up and down on his screen. Hit him, pop back up, and chow him instantly. He couldn't see me because I was crouched to a prone, basically snaking on his screen, where instead of me just standing straight up to fight these guys, I then use cover to my advantage the team wipe one crouch prone pop up the team wipe in this specific clip here i'm going to be showing you guys the importance of the sliding left and right to change directions and gain info on the people that you're fighting i'm going into the hangar i'm going to be using cover to go back and forth to gain info on the targets by breaking their camera what they see so before they can even see me i'm already shooting at them but this also requires a proper smooth slide cancel which i showed you guys in part one how to properly and smoothly slide cancel this is then going to be to go behind cover right and to the left break the your opponent's camera but while you're doing this you're gaining information and seeing who you should be fighting first and so forth and so on so i'm going to play this clip through and through and then explain a little bit more So here, with both of these teams that I or both of these players that I was fighting, is every time I slid to the right and then back to the left, they were still looking right. Because for them, they they are expecting what most players would do is to just slide, wouldn't even slide possibly, and fight that fight to the right. But what I'm doing is gaining information, going back, going to the left, and using cover to my advantage 
even though I'm on the defensive, they are already expecting me to be there and already looking at me when I didn't expect them to be there. But even though that I am then still in the defensive, defensive, I'm using cover and movement to put me back on the offensive and absolutely make this team look silly. So as you can see here, slide left, take shots, take like I'm going back to the right, go back left, and they're both looking back to the right because they saw me prepare to go back to the right. You're gonna go left, go right, and use objects and cover to your advantage. Go back. This player is now shooting at the left. Again, breaking his camera. Before he even saw me, I'm already shooting at him. So now the bullets are probably hitting him and he is now thinking I'm on the right when I'm already fighting his target on his left. So going back and forth to gain more information and not just doing the standard and 50-50 fight, you're going to be using your cover to go back and forth to then make sure it's going to be a lot harder to track on your opponent's end, but a lot easier for you that they're going to be shooting in the complete opposite direction if you have good movement. So in this final example here, I'm going to be showing you guys how combining all the different types of movement into one can result in a nasty team wipe. So as you're going to see in this cup here, I use slide canceling to break a camera to get two kills, do a shoulder, to then go into a b-hop, to then slide cancel for more information on the last guy. I'm going to play this clip through and let you guys watch it, and then I'm going to explain it and break it down play by play. So in this team wipe here, I have four people near me. Now, prior to this clip, I fought them inside the hangar. So as you can see, the car parked inside. I had information before this that it was four. Again, information is key. So I see this first person coming close to me. Now, what most people would do is they see them and they either instantly fight or they back into a corner and wait for the target to push to them. Very defensive and very scared. What you should do is get the information, slide back, having the player think that you're panicking and hiding, and then slide cancel back to break their camera. So the first person, slide cancel back, break their camera. Now here, as I am now have 12 bullets, I am also throwing a shoulder on the vehicle to see if somebody else is challenging me. You can see here, I see the target by throwing the shoulder, he's coming up the box. Go back. Again, he thinks that I am then just going to stand there and hide. What you're going to do is go back, slide cancel out. They're not going to be expecting it. And you're moving a lot harder to track than you just standing still being scared. So you're going back, slide canceling out for the fight. That breaks the camera. Now here, there's another player flanking me that I hear. So I'm going to quick stun check this. And look back in the other direction so as i stun check this quick peek back around to see where the fourth player could be coming from now as you can see he's stunned but he does have on tack mask so now i know what he thinks i'm gonna do is stun him and run because i'm very very hurt and you can hear his teammates calling out very passionately something that i don't understand so now what i'm gonna do is again i have 18 bullets reload and hit a nasty b hop while he stuns to attack mass across his screen, a lot harder to track while also being stunned. Oh my gosh. Double hop, run back, and as you can see, final person throwing this quick little slide into the fight. I'd cancel shoulder, throw his head right here, coming to my right. So now, instead of standing there, lighting up, I'm gonna instantly slide out, break his camera, and chow. A lot of times as these clips are being shown on Twitter or Instagram, what you guys don't think is there's a lot of pieces that I am playing through my head while I'm taking these fights. A ton of people, of course, would be like, you're cheating, but they don't see the actual IQ behind all of these plays. Oh my 
and that's a team wipe Alrighty, guys, that is going to be the conclusion of part one of our two-part movement guide series. If you guys did enjoy this video and have any feedback down below of tips, tricks, or things that I missed that you guys would like for me to touch on on part two, please comment that down below. I love to see some feedback from you guys. And I'm also thinking about going into more of some coaching videos and stuff because I know you guys really do enjoy this. Thinking about like some aiming tips, centering, uh, positioning, that type of thing. In some future videos, if you guys do enjoy this. And if you guys are new here and would like to subscribe and support the channel, I would really appreciate that. As always, no peer pressure. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace!